If you had the chance to save someone's life, would you do it? If all it required was being positive and kind, would it still be an option? What if saving someone's life meant taking 15 minutes out of your day to listen to someone else talk about his or her problems? In school, we're taught core subjects such as math, science, English, and social studies. But an important part of a complete education for success in the future is being left out of school curriculums entirely, learning how to treat others. Hello, my name is Brendan Stanton, and this is The Challenge. According to bullyingstatistics.org, every second a student in public school is suspended in America. Every nine seconds, a student drops out of high school. Every 20 seconds, a child is arrested. Every 30 minutes, a child or teen commits suicide as a direct result of being bullied. Nearly one in three students are involved in bullying. It is estimated that over half of bullying and cyberbullying events go unreported. And on a daily average, nearly 160,000 children don't attend school because of fear that they will be bullied. Every day, in every school, in every classroom across America, students are struggling to succeed. And it's not just because they're failing to meet the grade. The issues of violence, abuse, oppression, racism, bullying, cyberbullying, teasing, and sometimes even joking are undermining education in America. It's always been an issue, but today, statistics and tragic events over the past few decades have proven that something more must be done to give students a complete education to truly prepare them for their future as a responsible citizen and a neighborly adult. The best way to solve and eliminate the issues that divide us is to start at the root of the problem. Besides home, students spend most of their time at school, where it is almost impossible to escape from distress. I honestly can't think of a single day I've ever spent at school in which I didn't witness some act of physical or emotional bullying or teasing. If the future of our communities relies on the next generation, then it should not only be everyone's priority to make the next generation intelligent, but also caring and compassionate people. Improving how we act and how we work together is the best way to start. In February of 2010, a group called Challenge Day came to Ketchikan High School. At first, not many people knew what a Challenge Day was or what it was all about. Most people knew that it was all day in the gym and a great way to get out of class. So permission slips started flooding in and before long, space had filled up. Luckily, I was one of about 200 students who would participate in this one-day special event formed to break down barriers and make every child feel safe, loved, and celebrated. That night, I fell soundly asleep, keeping in mind that I didn't have to go to a single class the next day. Little did I know that Challenge Day would be so much more than a free pass out of class. It would be a life-changing experience for everyone. The moment we all walked through those gym doors the next morning, we were funneled through a tunnel of high fives, welcomes, words of encouragement, and the smiling faces of many of our teachers and people from around the community. We started the day with some icebreaker and get to know you games, and before long, students started stepping outside of the comfort zones they had walked in with. The first thing we learned at Challenge Day is that there's no specific way to define a man or a woman. It may sound sort of silly, but we're not all just one person. We're individuals with different talents, abilities, and lives. Our Challenge Day leaders explained that often in life, children are put into what they called a man box or a lady's flower. To fit into the man box, boys hear things like, toughen up, don't cry, or even worse, don't be a girl. On the other hand, girls are often faced with drama, rumors, and looking like the girls in the magazines. So many times in life, children are negatively pressured and told who to be, what to do, and how to live their lives. So where does all the real emotion end up? Most of the time, students tend to take it out on each other, and what many of them don't understand is not only how much damage they're doing to their peers, but that many of their peers are going through similar issues and hardships in their own lives. But we also learn that there's no such thing as a bad student, only bad actions. Those who bully and hurt others just don't know how to control their feelings. Our Challenge Day leaders gave us an analogy to help explain why this might be. They said that every person is like an iceberg. 10% of us shows above the water. This is our image, what is usually faked. 
90% of us is hidden beneath the water. What we hold on the inside, but what is real, but what most people don't know about us. At Challenge Day, we are told to forget about images and to just be real. Currently, there's a show on MTV that goes inside of Challenge Day to document students' experiences called If You Really Knew Me. The name of the show comes from asking and answering the statement, If You Really Knew Me, You Would Know This. This question really allowed students to open up and share how they really felt on the inside. For example, if you really knew me, you would know that throughout fifth and sixth grade, I was bullied on a daily basis, sometimes to the point where I didn't want to go to school. If you really knew me, you would know that in my freshman year of high school, I would go to English class every day, sit down and do my work, try not to bother the others around me. But every day I noticed that there was a girl who would walk into class, sit down behind me, and she always seemed to be depressed. But I never said much more than, hey, what's up, or how are you? One night in early May, I watched one of the most beautiful sunsets of the year. And the next morning, I received word that that girl who I had never really reached out to or really gotten to know had committed suicide. It's so easy to go through life, ignore others, put people down, not care about how anyone else feels, and only care about yourself. But that's why it's called a challenge, because it pushes you to reach beyond your comfort zone, to make a change in your life, to make the difference in someone else's. Our words and actions have no limits as to how they can affect a person, which is why it is so important to make those words and actions positive and kind. At one point during my Challenge Day experience, everyone went to one side of the gym and would cross a line if they belonged to a certain group of people. For example, you would cross the line if you had ever been teased or bullied because of the color of your skin or the way you looked. You would cross the line if someone in your family suffered from drug or alcohol addiction. Now keep in mind that when crossing this line, students were entering into a group of people that is often abused, oppressed, or at a disadvantage. This activity went on for about 15 minutes as people cried, people hugged, and those of us who were lucky enough to stay on the original side of the line held up the world sign language symbol for I love you. One question in particular though truly sent me over the edge and was the main push behind writing this speech. One of our challenge day leaders said, cross that line if you have ever been hurt, bullied or abused by someone in this room. Almost every single person crossed that line. In that moment, you could feel the power and the emotion pouring out in total silence. The true realization that there's no point in hurting other people and that no one deserves to be hurt finally seemed to be apparent. Now that we all knew these things, the realization that maybe the attitude could change around our school didn't seem too far-fetched anymore. Challenge Day was a great step forward in changing the attitude and atmosphere at Ketchikan High School. And although it was only a one-day event, the effects have been long-lasting. But of course, not everyone can have a Challenge Day, which is why I wrote this speech. I've spent countless hours researching on what schools should do to prevent bullying, what law enforcement should do, or perhaps even what our government should do. Today, I could have talked to you about what anyone else should be doing, but instead, I wanted to give you the motivation to go out and be the change yourself. Let's stop the problem before it happens rather than seek retribution after it's happened. Challenge Day can come in and change a room full of students like me, but it takes each and every one of us, the students, their parents, their teachers, every community member, and every person listening to this speech now to make noticeable and lasting change. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye would make the whole world blind. He also said, be the change you want to see in the world. Change is a three-step process. Notice, choose, and act. I've given you the first step. Now all that's left for you to do is to make the decision to go out into the world and create positive change. Picture for a moment what schools might be like a decade from now. Bullying, depression, violence, and hurt could be a thing of the past. School wouldn't have to be a difficult place to go. We are the change, and that is the challenge. Because who knows, you might just save someone's life.